Hi, I'm Dave and welcome to the Canyon Chasers Garage. Today we're going to be upgrading the brake calipers on the Multistrada 1200. On 2010 to 2014 Multistratas, Ducati fit the Brembo P4 caliper. This is the same caliper that comes stock on the smaller and lighter Monsters and Hyper Motards, and even on the first four years of the 848 Superbike, including our 848. From what we've been told, the problem with the P4 calipers is that the face of the piston inside the caliper is actually too thin. So when the brakes get hot, that face will actually flex, which will cause a, a mushy or an inconsistent feel. This really isn't a problem on the Monsters and the Hyper Motards, which are much smaller and lighter and a lot less powerful. And honestly, we've never even had a problem with these calipers on our 848 Superbike. But we noticed this on our heavier and much more powerful Multistrada pretty much straight away, particularly when the bike is loaded with luggage and doing a lot of downhill braking. In fact, Ducati even stopped putting the P4 calipers on the 848 Superbike after a couple model years. And by 2015, Ducati finally started putting the much more powerful Brembo M50 calipers on the new Multi. So before we get into this, if you choose to do this upgrade, understand that you will be making changes to the braking system on your motorcycle. And while this process isn't all that complicated, if you do not feel entirely comfortable doing this, then we strongly suggest that you take your motorcycle to a certified or an authorized motorcycle technician. Virtually every Multistrada 1200 comes with ABS, which adds an additional level of complexity to this process. What's more, if you have a 2013 or a 2014 Multistrada, they have linked brakes, and linked brakes add an even greater level of complexity to the final bleed procedure because all of the brake and ABS circuits are interconnected. In order to do this upgrade, here's what you're going to need. A set of Brembo M50 or M4 monoblock calipers, new brake pads and brake fluid, a brake line kit, and we're going to talk more about this in a minute, a quality torque wrench, plus you'll need a good assortment of quality hand tools, including brake bleeding tools, and ideally access to a compressor. We won't actually be going through the steps of bleeding the brakes in this video. Please watch our How to Bleed Brakes video for more information on that process. Because the Brembo M50 and M4 calipers mounting point is slightly different than the Brembo P4, you're going to need two new brake lines. On most motorcycles without ABS, installing stainless steel brake lines is really straightforward because really all you're doing is re you're replacing the lines that run from the master cylinder to the front brakes. But when you have ABS, the brake line actually runs from the master cylinder to the ABS control unit, typically under the seat, and then from there to the calipers. So for this job, what we need to do is we need to replace the brake line that runs from the ABS control unit underneath the seat to the left front caliper, and then the saddle line that runs from the left front caliper to the right front caliper. We chose Spiegler brake lines for the task. There are lots of companies making a very high quality product, but the reason we chose Spiegler was that they are entirely made in the USA and Germany, and they are DOT approved. They come in a rainbow of different colors. They claim 117 different color combinations. They even have a web applet that lets you customize the color of the lines, banjos, and banjo bolts. But the biggest reason we opted to use Spiegler is because they feature an adjustable banjo fitting that allows you to rotate the banjo to ensure the line fits perfectly. Essentially, each brake line kit comes with this bracket and this plastic dowel. Place the bracket around the silver crimping to ensure that you line up these four teeth with the recesses in the silver crimping. Hold the bracket tight in a vise and use the plastic dowel to rotate the banjo fitting. This brilliant little feature allows you to install the brake lines in a manner that puts no additional strain or twist on your brake lines. We've ordered brake line kits from other manufacturers where the, the banjos weren't quite at the right angle and it forced us to actually start over and delay the project until we could get the right lines. If you order from Spiegler, you're going to need these two brake lines, an EL0510-002002 and an EL1900-002002. Make sure that you order the kit so that you also get new banjo bolts, crush washers, and the tools to rotate the banjo fittings. The first thing you need to do is remove the tank from your Multistrada, which also requires removing the nose and the winglets. You will also need to remove the tail, the splash guard on the front fender. We removed the entire front wheel just for clarity. On the back of the splash guard, there's two Allen bolts that hold it into the fender. You remove those and, and that comes out and that'll free the saddle line. We also put the calipers back on the fork legs just to make the, the job easier from here. The brake line runs along the right side of the frame goes between the forks, attaches to the lower triple clamp, and then down to the left brake caliper. Remove this retaining bracket, 
clip the zip ties that hold the line in place, then remove the plastic clips that hold the ABS sensor wire to the brake line. Save these clips for later, you're going to reuse them. Then remove the bracket on the front of the lower triple clamp. Essentially, we want to prepare the line to be removed from the bike. Next, we need to get the existing brake fluid out of the system. We strongly suggest that you put paper towels down any and everywhere that brake fluid could potentially spill. Brake fluid is corrosive, so we don't want to let it get on anything, and if it does, clean it up promptly. We really encourage the use of a pneumatic brake bleeder. This works exactly like a mini-vac. It creates a vacuum, but it creates a lot more vacuum than a mini-vac, so you get a more suction. Um, these things can be had at Harbor Freight for about $30, or you could buy a professional one for around $150. We like to first clean the fluid out of the remote reservoir on the master cylinder. You can mop the fluid out with a paper towel, suck the fluid out with a midi-vac pump, or use your new pneumatic brake fluid bleeder. You want to do this to avoid pulling dirty fluid and contaminants back through the ABS pump. To get the fluid out of your brake lines, go to the right front caliper, attach the hose to the bleeder valve, then open the valve a quarter to a half a turn, squeeze the trigger, and the pneumatic bleeder will draw all the fluid out of the system. Once you feel good that most of the fluid has been removed, loosen the banjo bolts on the brake calipers and loosen the banjo bolts on the ABS pump. Make sure you loosen the correct line, the red line in this graphic. What we like to do before you pull the bolt all the way out is get a piece of paper towel and then you, you roll it up. And then what you do when you pull the bolt out, you stuff this into the banjo connection to help soak up any residual fluid that's still in the line. Remove the bolt from the ABS pump and stuff the paper towel into the banjo fitting. Then do the same for the two banjos on the right and the left brake caliper. Be extremely careful with the surface where the banjo bolts mount. You do not want to nick or scratch this surface. Once the brake lines are removed, you'll be able to remove the P4 calipers. Again, be careful. There is still going to be a lot of fluid inside the calipers themselves. Clean the mounting surface on the ABS pump and dry fit your new calipers onto the fork legs. We suggest leaving the brake pads off until the entire system is buttoned up. Spilling brake fluid onto your brake pads will ruin the pad. Now start running the new brake lines to make sure they are the correct length and to ensure the banjo connections are all at the correct angles. If the banjos are not correct and you are smart and chose Spiegler lines, then you can rotate the fittings to ensure a perfect fitment. When you feel good about the lines, then we like to fit the bolts, but only finger tight with the crush washers in place. A crush washer goes on either side of the banjo fitting like this. On the left front caliper, where two banjo fittings go onto one bolt, make sure you place a crush washer on the top, one in between the two fittings, and one on the bottom. At this point, we suggest mostly reassembling the motorcycle. That way you can really make sure all the routing and all the lines are, are in there perfectly. Um, you only get one chance to tighten these, these crush washers, so you want to make sure everything is right where it needs to be before you break out the torque wrench. Spiegler uses aluminum banjo bolts with a specific crush washer. Again, make sure you use a torque wrench and tighten the bolts to 18 newton meters or 12 foot pounds. If they are too loose, they will leak. Also, if you over tighten them, they will leak. So be precise here, 18 newton meters or 12 foot pounds. We're not going to cover the details of bleeding the brakes in this video. For that, please go and check out our, our other video that is dedicated entirely to bleeding the brakes. Well, thanks so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to check out our website for more how-to videos, uh, travel logs, product reviews, and much, much more.